Hello, this is Rashmi from Wellbeing with Rashmi. I'm a registered health and nutrition counselor as well as registered health coach. In today's video, we're going to talk about whole foods. So recently, a friend of mine asked me what is the best way to manage and reduce chronic inflammation. I suggested that one of the best ways to manage and reduce inflammation is by eating a diet full of whole foods with an emphasis on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, good quality plant-based proteins, and healthy fats. She said that she's been eating wheat flour and white rice and she's still struggling with inflammation. Are they not whole foods? I think her question is valid. We all consume many food items thinking they are whole foods, but in reality, they are not and cause us more harm. So how would we know the food we eat are whole foods? In today's video, let's take a look at whole foods. The definition of whole food is the food that has been processed or refined as little as possible and is free from additives or other artificial substances which means they are either not processed or processed very little and are free from added flavors, colors, or other artificial substances. Whole foods do not have a list of ingredients you cannot pronounce. Fruits and vegetables are whole foods, but they could be full of synthetic pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. By eating such foods, we are putting those toxins into our body, and it is possible that we may still continue to experience inflammation. So if you really want to combat inflammation, eat organic fruits and vegetables as they are free from those chemicals and toxins. So you may ask, what about whole grains, especially wheat and rice? As many people think wheat flour is whole grain and rice is also whole grain, they eat two to three times a day and still struggle with inflammation. So let me tell you, a whole grain has three key parts, the bran, germ, and endosperm and each part has health promoting nutrients. The bran is the outer layer full of fiber that supplies B vitamins, iron, copper, zinc, magnesium, antioxidants and phytochemicals which are natural chemical compounds in plants that help in disease prevention. The germ is the core of the grain that can grow into another plant and it is rich in healthy fats, vitamin E, B vitamins, phytochemicals, and antioxidants. The endosperm is the interior layer that has carbohydrates, protein, and small amount of some B vitamins and minerals. So the wheat we consume these days is very different from what our parents and grandparents ate. This wheat is engineered and is highly resistant to pesticides. Whole wheat flour that is sold commercially is not whole grain. It is a mixture of endosperm and the bran, but most of the germ, the inside part, is removed. Whole grain whole wheat flour is a whole grain, but is not widely available, and you may have to buy it from a health food store or make it at home. To make your whole wheat flour a whole grain whole wheat flour at home, you need to add back in the wheat germ in the ratio of one cup wheat flour to one tablespoon wheat germ. When you're buying prepared food products, look for the ones that say whole grain, whole wheat flour. Remember, whole grain, whole wheat flour on the list of ingredients. Or they have, you know, wheat germ listed separately as an ingredient. Alternatively, you may want to include other whole grains such as quinoa, millet, amaranth or rajgira, barley, corn, rye, spelt, buckwheat or kutu, shorgum or jawar, and finger millet or ragi. Similarly, white rice is, ref is a refined grain but because its germ and the bran part have been removed. That is why white rice is softer and gets cooked very quickly. Instead of white rice, you can use brown rice which is a whole grain that contains all three parts and you know these provide fiber and several vitamins and minerals. Now let's take a look at the protein part. We get protein from plants as well as animals. Although animal protein is a complete protein, meaning it has all the nine essential amino acids, there are compounds found in animal products or made during production that when consumed, they would increase the inflammation. These compounds exist in all meat regardless of organic agriculture. 
Therefore, I would suggest eating good quality plant-based protein if you really want to combat inflammation. Now, eat protein that you get from beans and legumes such as lentils, mung beans, black-eyed beans, chickpeas, and kidney beans. To, to lower the potential side effects, soak beans in sufficient quantity of water for at least 12 hours, 12 to 48 hours before cooking. Keep changing the water every few hours if possible. Lastly, let's take a look at the healthy fats. The best fat is the one that is close to its natural state or at least least processed and is organic. Use extra virgin olive oil, avocado, coconut, flax seed and hemp seed oil. They're also, you know, they're all good options. When buying fats, make sure they're organic to avoid contamination from pesticides and herbicides. So now I hope you know the difference between the actual whole foods and foods sold as whole foods, which may or may not be whole foods. My suggestion is to read the list of ingredients carefully. For example, when you buy bread, the list of ingredients should say whole grain, whole wheat flour, not just whole wheat flour. FII, multigrain bread may not fall under the whole wheat, whole grain or whole food category. Also remember to buy items that are either not processed or processed very little and are free from added flavors, colors, and other artificial substances. In my next video, we will talk about another important topic. Please eat healthy, make better choices, and live longer. Wishing you good health. Bye for now.